Yeah, we got a lot of ground to cover in today's video, so I did take some notes. Today I kind of want to talk about when it comes to the public aquarium that we're trying to launch, I want to talk about something that I'm absolutely loving. Um, also something that I recently discovered by kind of like accident, that's a complete game changer. Uh, something for you guys that you guys are gonna like and appreciate. And of course, oh, something I'm looking forward to. And then last but not least, what I'm actually truly excited about that I've also recently discovered that I don't think many of you guys are going to be able to think of off the top of your head, but once you hear it, you'll be like, yeah, I get it. And then finally, uh, something that could potentially shut down everything. And then this, this doesn't even happen. We'll get to that. Okay, let's start off with something I am absolutely in love with. First and foremost, of course, the wall uh, with the aquariums jutting out is almost complete. You'll notice that I've covered it in like a uh, brush. This is technically exactly what I'm using on the pond. I'm missing one, so I'll cover that up maybe, you know, next week at some point. Um, I don't expect this to look natural. I don't, there's not enough sunlight for it to come in to have natural plants, but I will be having pothos on top of the tanks and allow them to kind of grow up through the vines and it will fill in and look even more natural. Uh, the stands are mostly done. Look at these. Uh, I'm going to show you how I did them, but they are so sleek and turned out so, so, so nice. Way better than I thought they were going to. Uh, to summarize though, that's wainscot. You use this on the bottoms of walls and whatnot. It's relatively cheap. It's made of like a press board um, or like a MDF. And then of course, just some trim to go around the top. There is a depression. Um, the stands are not depressed. <laughs> If they were, they got it from me. <laughs> no, the depression here is for uh, styrofoam to go in here. So you don't see the styrofoam when this tank sits on top of it. And this is just going to uh, absorb any irregularities in the stand or, you know, you know me, maybe another rock. Who knows? Uh, I also painted the wall black. And before we get into what's something really cool, uh, we'll first kind of take a look at uh, the layout. A lot of things have changed. I can't look over this way too much or you'll know what the end of the video is going to be like, but... Uh, as you can see, I took a lot of your guys' advice and we went black with almost everything. A lot of people were talking about this black uh, pipe for the heating system. Uh, so that duct's been black. Uh, duct, not duck. Duct's been black. The entrance to the reptile room is black. And then this back wall is black. Um, don't worry about the blue wall here because once the tank's in place, you're literally not going to see it. I've also changed placement of this tank. And for now, uh, all of this for these... Uh, tanks here. These are all 180 gallon tanks, 375, 180, and the 700's going here. Obviously no tanks are in here just yet, but we're going to get to uh, that in a minute as to why. You'll notice that I've also placed the uh, the lighting brackets on here just to kind of get an idea of what they're going to look like. You're not going to see them. It's just going to look like a black thing popping out. And painting this wall black was like an annoying expense and annoying amount of time, but if I didn't, you'd be able to see like the blue through it. Now, you can't see this. But each one of these tanks, you see that? Each one of these tanks, oh, I can lift it up, perfect. Each one of these tanks is wired to have its own GFCI plug. Now, obviously the wires will just go up underneath the plants and then plug into there. The tanks will only come up to here, so you got almost a, you know, almost a foot before they reach that GFCI. And then those are all just wired right over to here. Baby steps. Uh, this wall's basically complete. Add that in, uh, that final thing, uh, plants there, put in the uh, the light brackets, hook up the lights, uh, and then we can continue to move forward. Up there, I just stored all my extra wood and whatnot. I'll show you how I built these stands here, uh, maybe in a future video, but I know you guys are getting sick of watching me build stands. And when you're launching a, an aquarium like this, and I've gone through this before with the original aquarium gallery, where like the first six months was just set up and building over and over and over again, and repetitively, repetitively the same thing over and over. And I know many people want to see the tanks arrive and do the scaping and the reptiles get here, except it's all coming. It's all coming. The next three months, will be incredibly exciting so long as this we'll get to that the reptile room okay this was by accident and i don't know if i told you guys this yet or not but so this used to be the entire facility used to be a gym and you can see it has like uh, padded floors here underneath this floor i don't even know if i can get these up because they're um basically waterproof they're all silicone down um 
but in here it's not. And look, I accidentally ripped a couple of these up and what's underneath here? Concrete. What? Now give me a second. Okay, so front entrance to my building. We come along the side here and see this window? So beside this is where all the tanks are lined up and that's the window that we we're just looking at. There's also another tank right here, but there's a, a, an addition. This is the reptile room. This entire area right here. Do you want to know what's under this? I'll show you. Soil. This is a regular foundation. There's literally nothing under this. I spoke to the, with the uh, landlord and went over it with the uh, structural engineers. And this is no different than the gallery's foundation, except it's just much higher up in the air. Now what that means is there's not going to be any weight limit in here. So, like my ex can come visit me. No, no, too. <laughs> just joking, she wasn't big anyway. <laughs> Anyways, there's, uh, there's no weight limit in here, which that means I can bring in water storage tanks. Obviously, um, this has to go over here. We're going to have the two black ones, which this holds 325 gallons. That one holds 275. It's like 600 gallons of fresh water and 275 gallons of salt water. They will be uh, stacked here. And since weight isn't an issue, uh, it's not going to be a problem. We'll have them linked together. I'll do all the plumbing here shortly, but then I got this massive pump that I'm gonna plumb through the wall and I could fill the tanks incredibly fast. We kind of went over this uh, about this in the past, but I was really, really excited about this because of a couple of reasons. One, with it being a reptile room, all I gotta do, and of course I still need to build a door and get um, an air exchanger in here, but we could potentially have one of these. I think I'm just going to move um, the big cage over a bit, which is 10 feet long, eight feet front to back and seven feet tall and build like maybe a pond in it. But, you know, I'm kind of happy things are moving slowly because I'm able to, you know, make these tiny little discoveries and little adjustments and changes, but it can just be boring to follow along with. Um, but man, this is going to look so good. Mind you, we've got like only like 5% done and, and I think everything's still looking amazing. That black was such a good choice, guys. So that being a concrete floor with no weight restrictions changes the way I was looking at that room in the first place because when uh, I had the structural engineer go over all the plans and things that I wanted to do, it was mainly this room. We never really talked about that room because I never planned on putting much weight in there. But now, man, okay, let me show you something that you guys are gonna like. Okay, it's not done, but this is the podcast studio. This is where I do my editing as well. Um, I still need to bring cameras in here and set everything up, but you'll notice that the back wall is now paneling. It's no longer gray. Um, I also switched out the light, so it's more spotlight. Oh, I moved this out of the way. And then this tiny little thing. Um, to be honest with you, these uh, the Aquarium's Unfiltered logo kind of thing. It's a little small, and I don't know if I like it, but, you know... It definitely looks really, really cool. So that's kind of what you would see on camera. Uh, but once we turn on the big lights and whatnot, this is what kind of lights us up. But so the studio is basically, the podcast studio is basically ready to go. At the end of the day, it's a podcast. You don't need to have visuals, but, um, and I know a lot of you guys are asking, when's the next podcast? When's the next podcast? Uh, and to be honest with you, it's just a time issue and scheduling issue and so many other things going on. And once you see what I'm about to have to deal with, you'll understand why I'm not really able to it's coming soon. What I am able to do right now is if you become a member of this channel, um, what I've been doing besides like giving them behind the scenes, photos, videos, that sort of thing is we're going live on Sundays at 3 PM Eastern standard time every Sunday. And it's not like live where you just listen to me. It's you join me and we see each other and we talk and there's like eight of us or nine of us all at once and other people can walk. It's a, it's a lot of fun. If you're not a member, join uh, or at least consider it. Helps this channel out tremendously. So I knew you guys are gonna like that because you've been asking me about it nonstop. Now, I don't mean to seem like I'm rushing along, but uh, I'm currently doing a water change on the 2000 gallon tank. It takes about two hours to fill. Um, Tamara's there watching, but um, I gotta get back and make sure I shut the water off. I've done that way too many times. I forget to shut the water off, have you? I, I, I don't even need to ask you. If you've been a fish keeper longer than three days, you've flooded your fish tank and filled it up too much or drained it too much. I usually get a pair of gloves, just some cheap ones, two, three bucks, 
with a rubber grip to move my aquariums. I've historically done that because I didn't want to invest in anything that will help me lift tanks because I really rarely ever had to move aquariums around. Now it seems over the past four years, that's all I've been doing. So this is something that I'm finally looking forward to. And I think anybody that knows a case like this knows what's in here. This is a laser beam. No, it's a, it's a suction cup. I'll show you how it works. I could probably just use this wall. Put it on there and pump. I don't think this is, oh, it is, it is. I feel like I can rip the wall down. Oh, can I climb the wall? I can hang, I'm hanging. Okay, okay. So the way these works is you, know, you put it on the side of your aquarium and you pump it until it reaches its prime. And then you press a little button to release. These, each one of these will allow me to lift 660 pounds. Now, typically I would have just let my hands get ripped apart by lifting a tank up like you do, like everybody does. But I went ahead and got six of these. It's a bit of an investment because they're not cheap, but I'll tell you why. I, I did my uh, calculations on how much a 700 gallon aquarium empty is 1,171 pounds. That's a lot especially to try to get a grip on something that's like a right angle. There's no grip. But with this, if we put it on the sides of the tank, you just pick it up like, like it's gonna be totally different. The 120 is only weigh 216 pounds. So I've uh, historically been able to move them on my own. The acrylic tank, even though I've moved that on my own, weighs 365 pounds empty. The 180 gallon tanks, which is what I'm most concerned about because they are, our 10 of them weigh about 320 pounds a piece. But if we divide it by four, we're probably looking at closer to 80. Okay, so what is it that I'm actually excited about? Now, for, for the average person, if they were to ask me about this or I told them how excited I was, they'd just think I was a nerd or a, a kind of weird or anything. But if I tell you guys, you're gonna get it. For this though, I gotta bring in the bathroom with me. Okay, I'm only bringing you in here because it's the most accessible area for me right now to do this. But what I'm most excited about is not that I have water. It's what the water is. So for the, like the past 19 years of my hobby, no, closer to 18, because the first year in my hobby, I was on municipal water. I had to treat the water, uh, dechlorinate and whatnot, and the water here is highly dechlorinate or highly chlorinated. It's equivalent to how much chlorine's in a swimming pool, which is pretty high. I do have a method of uh, testing it and treating it and getting rid of it almost immediately. I'm going to show you guys that here in the near future when we get the water change system uh, lined up. A lot of the times I don't like to show those types of things because sometimes people just don't understand what I'm working on or what I'm doing and then they just don't like it. I'm like, well, wait till it's done. And you guys know the story. We've been doing this a while. But for the majority of my hobby, I've been on a well. Um, most notably, of course, over the past, I think, eight or nine years that I've owned my house uh, and my well. Uh, I have access, of course, to free water. It's not free. I mean, I got to pay the electricity to pump it out of the ground and heat it and that sort of thing. But it's not chlorinated. There's no chloramine in it. There's nothing like that. But there are other things that are trace uh, arsenic, for example, <laughs> which you guys know is typically uh, used as a rat killer. Um, and there's other things that could potentially be dangerous. So I got to monitor and keep an eye on that. But bottom line is being on a well and having so many aquariums just saves that one extra step of treating it. The downside to being on a well is I can't keep aquarium plants. Now, over the years, I've done a bunch of different types of planted tanks and it's really tough to have plants in hundreds and hundreds of gallons of aquarium simply because of my hard water. I've said it before, my water's hard enough to stand on. Um, the pH is 7.8. I've seen it get down to 7.6 uh, during like uh, the, the, the height of the summer. Um, but you know, back to 7.8, the water here is 6.8. It's almost, uh, neutral. So I'm going from alkaline to acidic and there's many, uh, benefits to having acidic water. Ammonia is not as toxic in, um, acidic water, for example. So when I'm setting up these new aquariums and there are mini cycles and whatnot, it's going to buy me a little bit more time to treat the water, to do my water change, etc. Um, but more importantly, I can actually keep plants now without battling the elements that are within my waters, what's coming out of the tap. It's been impossible. Well, not impossible. It's just a nightmare to have to keep doing it and working on it and, you know, our ODI or whatever the case. And like I said, when you have hundreds of gallons of aquariums, it just isn't that practical. But when it comes to these aquariums, I got really nice lights. Uh, 
and it's going to be super easy for me to have plants without worrying like oh, I'm only going to be able to have java fern and java moss and anubias and all of the you know plants that do really well in hard water and I can finally have almost anything and I think you guys are going to be really excited about that because I'll be able to grow new plants and propagate them and introduce you to new things that you might not already know and that is something that I am truly excited about. The downside to it is the acclimation process. Acclimating all of my fish to the parameters of this building which probably won't take very long maybe a couple hours per tank type of deal. I'll probably do a drip acclimation uh, going from alkaline to acidic can, it can sometimes be a, a tremendously stressful if you do it too quickly. But that's something we'll work on. Okay, so you've made it this far in the video and you really want to know what the bad is. What's, what could potentially stop any of this from happening or moving forward? And why aren't I much further ahead than I personally feel I should be? Simply put, I'm now at a standstill. Look at this disaster. I even had to stack my tanks up. My, the uh, stand frames for the other tanks I still, or the, the other stands I still got to build, I can't even finish them. So back in March when I originally started negotiating this lease and uh, viewing this place, uh, I knew that, uh, of course, this place hasn't had anybody in it for like four years, so I knew that I'd probably get in here no problem, which was the case. I believe I actually came to look at it in April, signed the lease, and they told me that if you sign the lease now, we can get this place up to code. Of course, it's been empty for four years, so there's things that changed or things that need to happen now. Because the neighbor, there's only one other person in this entire building, uh, they wanted to expand. So they cut through the firewall to get into another portion of this building. And because of that, they now have to put up another firewall, which separates the businesses right here. This was supposed to be done May 1st. I moved in June 1st. It is now July 2nd or 3rd or whatever today is. I, I, I stopped looking at the calendar because it just makes me more and more mad that this isn't done. Mind you, it has to be done. This place does have to be up to code and it does have to meet bylaw standards. But the reason all this scaffolding is up, and let me show you how bad this is. It's not bad. I mean, the scaffolding's well done. I mean, the roof's ripped down, the, the, the insulation's taken out, some of the lights aren't on anymore. Go in this room. Oh, look, more scaffolding. This entire room can't be used. All the scaffolding here. All over here, of course, I can't, uh, they're gonna have to cut most of this wall out, replace it, but what they're doing is they're cut, breaking this wall down. I'll take a step back here. They're gonna bust that wall down and put up the firewall from the uh, floor all the way through to the ceiling. Supposed to be done Monday. In fact, it was supposed to be done last week, but the crew that was supposed to do it walked out. They said, this is too much work. We didn't sign up for this, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I was left here, you know, twiddling my fingers, wondering when this is gonna be done. Mind you, it also goes into the quarantine area. Look at it, I had to move all the quarantine tanks out of the way. I had no idea that, um, I was told that I can do it, I would keep moving forward, they'll work around you. I was like, yeah, but what if something's up against the wall? They're like, don't worry about it, they can get it from either side, blah, blah, blah. That's not the case, they have to do everything from this side. None of this was in my lease, uh, and technically, <laughs> based off of, uh, legal advice the lease is broken i have every right if i want to leave this place now i don't want to but i also need this done i want to move forward we have things to do and and uh you know i can't even bring fish tanks in here or animals because they're going to put up a tarp they have no choice they're going to have to protect this area but all of the dust and, and thing i'm not risking the lives of my animals uh, because you want to get drywall and all this dust and whatever else in your aquariums you're running a high risk of killing everything in that tank all over here too at least i can get a good idea of what sky bridge will look like so here's the thing i actually found another place that is 4,000 square feet this is about 2,500 3,000 whatever it was um but i found a place that's actually 4,000 closer to 5,000 square feet um and if i move there i do I, I do lose deposit and all of the a month of work and paint and you know just painting and i'm not going to tell you how much all of this costs so far but it's been into the thousands at this point. So that's where I'm at. I mean, uh, if they start on Monday, it's supposed to take one day to rip the wall down and then two weeks to put the new one up and complete it and drywall it and paint it and all that stuff and make it look like this never happened. I'm gonna make sure they paint it black though because I'd like to have that black. And then I love the blue accents and whatnot. Anyways, that's it. I mean, lots going on, but really not. Trying to move forward, but can't. 
I mean, when they bring all the supplies in here, the reason all these stands are stacked up is because they need this entire, this entire area. Now, here's the fun part. The landlord told them I wouldn't be here. There would be no tenants in there. They'd have full range, et cetera. And I was told the opposite, that I can come in and act and, and set things up as normal, and they'll work around me. So that's another thing that I'm working with with them. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll, I'll do a rant this, uh, this coming Sunday for the members only if you guys want to join that or ask questions or be able to be one-on-one. -on -one. There's I haven't really promoted memberships for as long as they've existed, so the membership numbers have stayed small, and it's probably the best time to join because you actually get to conversate, and I think you like it. Anyways, i got to go shut the water off to the 2,000 gallons. See you guys in the next video.